Today we're taking a look at these NCAAF matches, which are happening on Saturday, November 26, 2022, and giving you match breakdowns, betting tips and predictions in general on these games. Welcome back to High Stakes, let's get straight into it, also, don't forget to subscribe and push that notification bell to get notified as soon as we release these sport prediction videos, and if you would like more betting tips and predictions, then check out our Patreon in the link down below. Our new Patreon is a way for us to help you improve your chances of making more money. Multiple plans are available for each and every one of you, by becoming a member of the High Stakes Patreon, you will have access to our best team picks, total picks, parlay picks and much more. Stop wasting hours of your time searching for bad betting predictions that ends up costing you a lot of time and money. Join the High Stakes Patreon now and get the best betting picks. Going back to our video we will give you two betting picks for each game, a team pick and a total pick based on facts and detailed explanation. So make sure to watch our videos till the end, so you don't miss any of our picks. Texas A&M vs LSU. The Tigers have won five straight games and all three of their road games. They have played well offensively, scoring more than 33 points per game. They are balanced offensively, but they have the 34th best running game in the country. The Aggies have played well defensively this season, but they are one of the worst teams in the country when it comes to stopping the pass and will have a hard time slowing down the Tigers. The Aggies have lost six of their last seven games and two of their last three home game. They aren't very good offensively, scoring a little over 21 points per game. They don't run the ball well and their passing game is only a little bit better. The Tigers are great against the run and will be able to focus on stopping the pass. With the team giving up only 20 points per game, the Aggies will have a hard time keeping up, so go with LSU to cover the spread. Take LSU Tigers minus 10 points. These two teams can put up some big totals when they get together. Just four years ago they had a combined 146 points in an overtime thriller. The over has hit in four of the last six games in this series. LSU has gone over in four of their last five games, while A&M has had three overs in their last five games. The Tigers have scored 38 or more points on five occasions this season, I expect that again, and that'll get us pretty darn close alone. A&M definitely scores a couple of times and puts this over for us. Take over, 47.5 points. Boston College vs Syracuse. It seems like a distant memory now, but at one time the Syracuse Orange were 6-0. That run included ACC wins over Louisville, Virginia, and North Carolina State, and they also beat the Big Ten's Purdue and a scrappy Yukon team that beat Boston College. But then the wheels came off. The Orange have lost five in a row since then, including losses to Clemson, Notre Dame, Pittsburgh, Florida State, and Wake Forest, who beat them last week by the score of 45-35. Syracuse was a 9.5 point underdog. So now Syracuse sits at 6-5 overall and 3-4 in the ACC, second to last in the Atlantic Division just ahead of BC. The Boston College Eagles have had a terrible season. They are 3-8 overall and 2-5 in the ACC, and they sit in last place in the ACC's Atlantic Division. They are coming off an embarrassing 44-0 loss to Notre Dame last week in South Bend. Notre Dame was a 20-point favorite. It was a tough pill to swallow as BC had been coming off a rare win, as they beat North Carolina State on the road the week prior 21-20. But this was just a beatdown of epic proportions as they were completely outclassed by the superior Notre Dame team. Granted, conditions weren't great as it was snowing at game time, but still, one team performed and the other did not. The Orange scored a couple of garbage touchdowns to make this final look respectable, but in reality, it wasn't very close. Ultimately, they gave up 543 total yards to Wake Forest, and they just won't get it done. The Eagles did manage 477 yards themselves, but a lot of that was in garbage time. The Demon Deacons had 36-21 first down edge. Garrett Schrader was just 17 of 31 for 324, with one touchdown and one interception. The brightest light for Syracuse has been running back Sean Tucker, who had another good game with 106 rushing yards and two touchdowns. Oren Gadsden had six catches for 85 yards, while Dev Ogden Cooper and Lequintalen each had touchdown catches. The Orange rank 71st in points scored with 28 points per game, and they rank 36th in points allowed, giving up 22.6 points per game. These are two teams headed in the same direction, down. 
Syracuse has lost five straight games, and Boston College has lost five of their last six outing. Syracuse is the better team, or at least they should be, but 10.5 points is way too many points to give up to a team that is struggling as much as they are right now, playing on the road no less. Now BC is not a good football team, but they played Duke tough and covered, beat Louisville, and hung with Clemson for a good portion of that game, until things got out of hand late. Syracuse on the other hand has only one road win, and that was at Yukon, so while they may pull this one out, take Boston College to cover getting the points. Take Boston College plus 10.5 points. These are two teams whose stronger side of the ball is defense. The trends support that, as Syracuse is 2-6 against the OU in their last eight games. Not to mention that Boston College just got shut out last week, so their offense hasn't exactly been killer, ranked 124th in points per game. This game is going to be slow and run heavy, so I like the value of the under 47 points. Texas Tech vs. Oklahoma. After losing two straight games, Oklahoma was desperate to secure a win and gain bowl eligibility. The added kicker was that their next opponent was against hated rival Oklahoma State at home. The Sooners defeated the Cowboys 28-13 in dominant fashion, as Oklahoma sits in 7th place with a 6-5 overall record and a 3-5 conference record. The Sooners were unbelievable to start the game as momentum was solid with the home team. Oklahoma scored four touchdowns in the opening quarter to give Oklahoma a 28-0 lead that they ultimately held on to. Quarterback Dylan Gabriel rushed in for the opening touchdown of the game. He then tossed two touchdown passes. Running back Eric Gray earned the short rushing touchdown to add to the Oklahoma lead. Gabriel ended with 259 yards on 24-40 passing. He threw for two touchdowns and finished with an interception. Gray ran for 90 yards on 20 carries and added a touchdown. Gabriel rushed for 30 yards on 6 carries. Oklahoma has not been great this season away from home as they own a record of 2-2. The Sooners are 4-7 against the spread this year. They are 3-6 against the spread when they are favored this year. Texas Tech is 6-5 against the spread this year, and they are 5-1 straight up at home. The Red Raiders have been excellent in the passing game as they rank 15th in the country in passing yards earned per game. Oklahoma is giving up 246 yards per game through the air, which ranks 96th in the country. Oklahoma's road woes scare me, and Texas Tech should be confident at their home place in the last regular season game of the season. Take the Red Raiders to cover the spread on Saturday. Last week, the Red Raiders came out victorious with a final of 14-10 when they played their fellow Big 12 team Iowa State Cyclones, 4-7, 1-7 Big 12. This was the sixth time this season that Iowa State lost a one-score game. The Red Raiders' red zone defense put up a great effort, holding the Cyclones to just three points on five trips near the goal line and limiting Iowa State to just one touchdown in total. Texas Tech QB Tyler Show passed for 141 yards and one touchdown, completing 15 21sts passes and zero interceptions. Running back Todd Brooks ran for 45 yards out of 105 yards on the ground and 246 total offensive yards. Both Texas Tech and Oklahoma are decent offensive teams that can put the points on the board. Both teams are also similar in that their defenses are on the weaker tier in FBS, with Oklahoma ranked 80th and Texas Tech at 113th in total yards allowed. In rushing yards allowed, they are both slightly worse, with Oklahoma ranked 82nd and the Cowboys ranked 115th. The trend support going over for this game. Over is 5-1 in Red Raiders' last six home games, and over is 6-2 in Sooners' last eight games versus a team with a winning record. Go over on this physical and emotional game.